Hi everyone, Tom Wolf here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create this ambient granular pad in Arturia Pigments. Okay, so this is a preset called Beauty Inside, and this comes from my SynthVault July presets. So if you don't know about SynthVault yet, SynthVault is a new membership that I've started on my website. Each month you get 20 brand new presets, five for Omnisphere, five for Pigments, five for a Yuhi synth, and then five for Wildcard synth, which is any synth that I choose that month. It could be a free synth or it could be a paid synth. And you get these all as a member. And the best part is that being a member is completely free. So if you want to grab this preset now, you can kind of go through it as well and uh, deconstruct the preset as I kind of go through this tutorial. So there's a link to sign up for your free Synth Vault membership in the description. So let's have a look at how to create this pad. Okay, so with this preset, we're gonna start with Engine 2. And Engine 2 is set to Wavetable, and we've got the Wavetable set to the basic waveform, which just gives us a sine, triangle, saw, and square tooth wave in a Wavetable. Um, we're gonna stick with the sine wave. So let's have a little listen to that. Turn the volume up a bit. So it's just a basic kind of sine wave there. We can turn our attack down a little bit. Okay, so we've just got a normal sine wave. We're then going to turn on our phase distortion. So we've got this set to skew at the moment. We're just going to turn that up to about just over 0.2. And that kind of makes it sound a little bit sort of sawtoothy. Just kind of like a soft sawtooth sound there. Um, we're then going to switch on the unison. So the unison is set to classic mode. We've got it set to four voices. We've got the detune up to just over 2%. Just bring the volume down a little bit. So we've got now got a nice kind of wide sound there. So then the output of this engine is going straight into filter two. So let's come over to filter two and we'll switch that on. And you can see we've got it set to multi-mode. So we've got it set to a low pass 24 dB. We've got the cutoff at about 500 Hertz. Um, this is then being modulated by our envelope two. So you can see our envelope two here. We've got a 1.65 second attack with a slight kind of curve there so it's actually kicking in quite quickly um, we've then got sustain all the way up and then we've got quite a long release about six and a half seconds there so if we play that you can hear we've kind of cut off a lot of that sound made it a lot warmer got rid of some of that buzz and then we've got the keyboard follow set to 0.36 as well So we're getting a kind of warm synth pad type thing there. So the next thing um, is the filter routing. So this is a new feature inside Pigments 3 and it's something that I've you know wanted in Pigments for quite a long time and they've finally kind of given it to us. Um, it used to be that you could have this pre-effect sum here. So you could either have the filters running in parallel or series and they've changed that now. So you can have them running in parallel but you can have them split so that they're going into um, the different effects sections. So when you've got this set up, you can have filter one going straight into effects A and filter two going straight into effects B. So now you can affect the individual sounds from the filters. So that's how we've got it set up in this preset. And we've got filter two going to effects B. So we come over here and we can start switching on our effects on this. So first we've got the new Juno 6 chorus on it. You can hear that gives it a sort of warbling, kind of analog pad sound, very kind of vintage. And then this is going into the new pitch shift delay. 
Okay, so this is kind of giving us a bit of a shimmer on the sound. So it's kind of like a fake shimmer reverb, really. And on that kind of tail, we've just got it pitching up an octave here. So you can see we've got it set to a quarter delay. Got a little bit of filtering happening here. A little bit of detune. And it's just kind of going up there. Okay, so that just gives us a nice kind of shimmery effect on this layer. So next we'll come back over to our engine one. We've got engine one set to a sample. Um, so we've just got it set to this basic grand piano C3 sample, which is included with pigments. Um, and let's just set the start back to the beginning and turn our attack down. So you can hear it's just a really kind of basic piano sound. We're going to set a slightly longer attack on our envelope one. Okay, and then we're going to set the start to about 0.2. And now we're going to switch on the granular engine. So with the granular, we've got it set to the trapezoid shape. Um, and then we've got the shape just morphed slightly here. So if I play that, so you can hear if I pull it over here, turn it up slightly, we get a kind of more sharp, abrasive sound. And over here is a bit smoother. So we've got it set to about 0.3. We've then got the density set to uh, 3 hertz. So it's quite sparse, but we've also got this randomization here. So this randomly um, changes the density as the samples kind of play back. So we're changing them to be more dense. And you can see we've got this set quite high. We've got it set to just over 0.6. So if we remove that, we get this really kind of sparse sound. So this is just giving us a nice kind of randomization there. And then we've got the time set quite high, so 352 milliseconds. So if we bring that down, we get this really abrupt kind of granulization there. Is that a word? Let's hope so. Um, and then we've also got this randomly changing as well. So we've got the size to be... Um, you know, randomizing to both bigger and shorter um, than is actually set with our size here. So that just gives us a nice, you know, non-uniform sound to it. So that was set to about halfway, I think. We've then also got our direction, which so this basically decides whether our samples are going to be played forwards or backwards. Um, you can have it either or, or you can have it somewhere in the middle. And at the moment, we've got this set to about 70% forward. So mostly forward, but some of the samples being played back, some of the grains are going to be reversed. We've got a tiny little bit of pitch shifting here, which just sort of modulates the pitch, offsets the grains against each other slightly. And then we've got our sample start randomization as well. So this is being, you know, randomized either side of our start point. If we have that off, you'll see every grain kind of starts at our sample start point. And we can just randomize that a little bit. We don't want too much, so we've got it set to about 0.25, I think. Okay, so we've got quite this, you know, got quite a smooth sound here. So then this is being fed directly into filter one. So switch on filter one. We've got filter one set up to the matrix 12 and this is set up to a low pass 24. Um, we've got the cutoff quite high and the cutoff isn't being modulated. We've got a little bit of resonance and then we've got quite a lot of keyboard follow here as well. So what this is essentially doing is just taking the very top trebly bit off there, kind of making the sound a little bit duller, a little bit less abrasive. And then because of our filter routing being set to FX split, this is then going straight into FXA. So we come over here, switch that on. And the only thing we're using at the moment is our multi-filter, which we've got set to a band pass 12 dB. Uh, we've got the cutoff set to just below 1000 Hertz. We've got the resonance quite high. And then we have got a little bit of uh, dry signal coming through here as well. So it's not 
being entirely filtered. So this is just kind of thinning out our sample even more here. And just kind of changing the tonality of it so that it fits nicer when we bring our other layer in, which is what we're going to do now. So let's turn on engine two. And we'll turn, bring that volume down a bit. Okay, so we're starting to get this kind of ambient pad sound, uh, which has this, you know, nice warm um, pad underneath it, but then it's just got these sort of like delicate overtones, which just work really nicely, which are coming from our piano sample there. So now what this needs, of course, is some reverb. So we're going to use our auxiliary to do that. So we'll switch that on. Um, we've already got the send up here. Firstly, we've got chorus. So this is just the normal pigments chorus that's been inside pigments for a long time. Uh, we've got the dry wet mix set to 50%. Uh, we've got the rate set to 0.411 hertz. Delay up to 11.4 milliseconds. The depth is set to 3.12 milliseconds little bit of feedback on here we've got it set to two voices as well so this is just going to kind of give our reverb a little bit of warmth and then we can switch on our reverb here and you can see because we've got it on our auxiliary we've got it set to 100 percent wet uh, we've got the decay up quite a long way we've got the size up to 1.9 we've got a little bit of pre-delay uh, damping's about halfway and then we've just got a little bit of filtering going on here as well so if we play that so now our kind of pitch shifting delay at the end as well kind of goes into our reverb there which gives it more of that kind of shimmer quality to it Okay, and then for kind of ease of control as well, um, I set the reverb to be controlled by this macro here. So macro four is essentially controlling our return here. So if you wanted to get rid of that reverb nice and easily, you just turn off that macro. Okay, so let's have a look at our different kind of modulation options. So we'll start with the mod wheel. So on the mod wheel, we're essentially controlling the auto panning of this preset. Okay, so on each of these uh, sections here, you can see we've got a stereo pan plugin. Uh, the reason I've got it on each of them is because when we've got the filter routing set to FX split, we're essentially getting three different feeds here. So we're getting filter one going into here and to the output. We're getting filter two going into here and to the output. And then we're getting a blend of both of these sent into here. So we need that control over each three of these. So let's switch on the one on well, let's switch on all of them. So uh, our stereo pan plugin. And then you can see we've got this synced to a quarter note. OK, and at the moment, the amount on all of them is set to off. So this is being controlled by our mod wheel. So if we click our mod wheel, you can see that our amount is turning that up to 0.5. And it's the same for each of them. So as soon as we play that and open our mod wheel, we get this big sweeping stereo image there. And that works really nicely on that reverb tail at the end there as well. So then we've got our macros as well. So on macro one, we've got a tremolo. So our tremolo is essentially an LFO um, and we've got the LFO set to a sine wave, of course. Um, I've got it synced to 16th notes and because it's in unipolar mode, I've set the phase to 180 degrees. It's also set to legato mode so that when I press a note, it will start that LFO um, and then it will stay at that speed rather than you know, resetting the LFO every time I press a key. 
So this is then controlling our different volumes here. So again, because we're running this in FX split, we've got individual uh, controls for each of these. So this is going to control our volume for each section. And I needed to put it to get the tremolo across the entire thing. I needed to control the volumes of our bus A, bus B and our return. So if we play that. And then I turn our tremolo macro up. get a nice rhythmic tremolo happening there. We've also got this OT grit, so that's overtone grit. Uh, so on our FXA, we've got a wave folder here, so I'm just going to switch that on. We've got the drive set all the way to the top. I've got it set to sign as the type, and I've got the output gain turned down all the way as well, and this is purely because when you're adding this much drive, the volume gets boosted a lot. Um, so if we play this, we can turn up our grit macro, and we're just getting some distortion just on our granular piano there. It just gives us a bit of edge to the preset. And then we've also got the overtone level here as well. So this was just an easy control because if you didn't want this kind of um, granular overtone happening here, you can just easily remove it with a macro. So all that is doing is controlling the bus A volume here. So there you have it. Okay, so yes, that was the preset Beauty Inside in Arturia Pigments. As I say, this preset is taken from my Synth Vault patches for July. Um, so you can download it for free. You can go through this tutorial and deconstruct it yourself. Um, and you can use the preset, of course, along with a bunch of other presets in there. So as I say, membership is completely free. Just head over to my website. You'll find a link in the description and you can sign up and every single month you'll get 20 free presets. Okay, so I hope you found that tutorial useful. Until next time, take care.